From the end of World War II to the present, hundreds of biographies have been written about Adolf Hitler. Normally, they inquire into the dictator's personality, looking for the reasons for his aberrational crimes, but among all the aspects of his life, there is one that continues to be a source of controversy to this day, the Führer's sexuality. When talking about his intimacy, there has been speculation about homosexuality, incest, sadomasochism and all kinds of extravagant fetishes. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we'll tell you all about Hitler's sexual secrets. Are you ready? Let's get started. In the days of World War II, the American government considered Hitler's sex life to be a fundamental question in understanding the workings of his mind. For this reason, the Office of Strategic Affairs, predecessor of the CIA, produced a report in 1942, which detailed Hitler's privacy and stated that he had been a homosexual since he was young. According to this document, between 1910 and 1913, when the future genocide was barely in his twenties trying to make a living as an amateur artist, he spent time in a men's hostel in Vienna. The report stated, this building was reputed to be a place where elderly men came to seek out young boys for homosexual pleasures. On the other hand, the text pointed out that the Führer would have maintained a sentimental relationship with one of his closest advisors. The U.S. intelligence service claimed that in the 1920s, when the National Socialist movement was taking its first steps, Hitler was in a relationship with his collaborator Rudolf Hess. The link between them would have begun when the two were sent to prison after a failed attempt to carry out a coup in 1923. The prolonged situation of isolation and the fact that Hess was the only person with whom he had contact would have led Hitler to feel an affinity for him. To support this hypothesis, American spies revealed that it was an open secret among the German upper classes that Rudolf Hess was homosexual. On many occasions he was seen attending dances and parties in women's attire, and his nickname was Miss Anna. In any case, the alleged relationship between the Führer and his advisor came to an end for him in 1941, when the latter stole a plane and escaped to England, where he turned himself in to the British authorities. In the following years, the theory that the Nazi leader was attracted to men was taken up by many other journalists and researchers. August Kubizek was a friend of Hitler during his youth who, in 1953, published a memoir recounting the anecdotes with his partner. Among the many events that the author recalls, some of them seem to insinuate that both boys shared some kind of sentimental bond. In one of the passages, Kubizek recalls a day in the field as follows, I spread a large piece of cloth on the hay and told him to take off his t-shirt and underpants. He lay down naked on the cloth, Adolf was greatly amused by this event, whose romantic undertones visibly pleased him. We didn't feel cold there anymore. However, the theory of Hitler's homosexuality has been rejected by other specialists, such as the British Ian Kershaw, author of the most important biography of the Führer. According to this historian, the report prepared by the Office of Strategic Affairs was not very serious and without foundation, and had been intended to serve as anti-Nazi propaganda, discrediting the dictator because of his sexual preferences. Kershaw argues that Hitler had a curious dislike of physical contact and intimacy, for fear of contracting a venereal disease. In fact, when he was still a soldier fighting in World War I, Hitler avoided discussing sex with his comrades in arms, who laughed at him as a celibate virgin. The future Nazi leader responded with phrases like, do you not have a sense of honor? On one occasion, he was asked if he had ever loved a woman. Hitler's reply was that he had never had time for such a thing, and that he probably never would. In any case, it is known that the dictator was romantically involved with some women. According to rumors from the 1930s, one of them was none other than his own niece, Jelly Robble, a 17-year-old girl who moved into her uncle's house in 1925. The nature of their relationship remains shrouded in mystery, but it is believed that Hitler was obsessed with the teenager, whom he kept under surveillance 24 hours a day. She was not allowed to leave the home without guardians and was even prohibited from being in a relationship. Years after World War II ended, Otto Strasser, a Nazi defector, testified that Hitler was forcing the young woman to have sex with him. 
On the other hand, Jelly Robble was supposedly forced to urinate on the Nazi leader, thus satisfying one of his great fetishes. In 1931, the young woman shot herself using her uncle's pistol. Once the Führer took over the German government, he used the propaganda system to convey the image of a celibate man, oblivious to sexual activity and solely committed to the welfare of his country. During those years, Ernst Sedgwick, one of his closest collaborators, tried to introduce women to Hitler, hoping that he would marry, but the Nazi leader was never interested in them. He turned down the daughter of the American ambassador, as well as the famous film director Lenny Riefenstahl. Every time they tried to get close to him, the Führer turned the conversation from personal topics to questions of international politics. Ernst Sedgwick stated the following, I believe that Hitler was neither a cat nor a dog, that is, he was neither homosexual nor heterosexual. I am convinced that he was impotent, repressed and addicted to masturbation. On the other hand, some researchers maintained that the dictator had sadomasochistic tendencies, which would be demonstrated by the aesthetics he chose for the Third Reich, full of uniforms, leather and whips. Marianne Hoppe, a famous actress among Nazi leaders, remembers that Hitler derived sexual pleasure from watching scenes of violence in the movies. On one occasion, while the Führer was watching a film that showed the German people fighting against the French troops of Napoleon Bonaparte, the following occurred, Hitler began to get excited in a strange way, moaning and rubbing his knees while in the film the stones rolled down the hill towards the French. I don't know if he was in his right mind about it, but he had some sort of orgasm. Even so, it is known that the dictator had an intense relationship with the Nazi activist Eva Braun. This link was kept secret for 14 years, as the Führer thought that if it were disclosed, his popularity among German women would diminish. However, there are various speculations surrounding the couple's sexual activity. According to researcher Thomas Lundmark, from the University of Hull, Hitler and Braun never had relations because she suffered from a rare gynecological condition, MRKH syndrome. This may have made Braun's vagina too tight, making sex painful. According to Lundmark, Braun's mission was to serve as a cover, a shield against rumors about the Führer's privacy. As we can see, Hitler's intimate life continues to be, even today, a controversial issue that continues to generate discussions. We have reached the end of the video and we want to ask you, what is your opinion about Hitler's sexuality? Finding the intimate diary of one of the most important Nazi leaders in history is a milestone in itself. But imagine if that document contained over 30,000 pages detailing his unrestrained sexual adventures. English writer Peter Longerich managed to access these documents and discovered, to his surprise, that Joseph Goebbels was a serial harasser. This was not a conclusion based on assumptions, but rather the Nazi official himself detailed his adventures and desires for different women. In today's video we will tell you about who Joseph Goebbels was, the Third Reich's obsessions with the role of women, and the pathological lust that the Nazi leader was prey to. Stay tuned for another captivating installment of military history. Let's begin. Über Goebbels kann man nur sagen, er war ein ausgezeichneter Schauspieler. Er war ein guter Schauspieler. Und die Verwandlung eines wohlerzogenen, seriösen Menschen in einen wüsten Krakeler kann kaum ein Schauspieler besser vollziehen als er. Josef Goebbels was one of the most important figures in the Third Reich, considered one of Hitler's most trusted officials during the rise and fall of Nazism. Goebbels died as he lived, one of the most devoted and fanatical followers of the Führer. Physically, he was a short man with a crippled foot due to polio, 
These physical shortcomings weighed on him, leading to a series of inappropriate behaviors and a complicated and neurotic personality. Despite his nefarious ideology, he was a brilliant man who, at the age of 28, was already a passionate speaker and a fanatical nationalist. Goebbels made a name for himself as the Nazi Minister of Propaganda, effectively controlling all media and culture in Germany during Hitler's dictatorial reign. He was the chief prophet and propagandist of the Nazi movement, shaping the national socialist identity as it was known to the world. The effects of Nazi propaganda on the German population and the rest of the world should not be underestimated. They were powerful tools of social control. The Nazis were able to deceive the German population for years and maintain strict control over the minds of citizens. Lies and propaganda were effective weapons of war, and Goebbels was a master at wielding them. But before becoming a controversial and infamous figure in history, he was just one among many in early 20th century Prussia. The son of a factory worker, Goebbels, first felt lust at the age of 16 for his school friend's stepmother. In 1912, he wrote in his diary, Eros awakened, sentimental period, in addition to love for mature women. Although his initial attraction did not materialize, his writings already reflected an unhealthy adoration for conquering the female body. In subsequent entries in his intimate diary throughout his youth, Goebbels detailed his conquests, such as when he seduced anonymous sisters named Liesel and Agnes while studying in Bonn in 1917. He also had a relationship in his hometown of Ride with Elsa Janke, a much older teacher, as recorded in his diary. This ended when she told him that her mother was Jewish. Upon this revelation, Goebbels wrote, her charms were destroyed for me the moment I learned the origin of her mother. Despite being a conqueror due to his oratory skills, he suffered greatly from the body he had been given by fate. Wenn man das so erlebt, wie ein Mensch, den man fast täglich, wenn er im Büro war, sah, gepflegt, vornehm, fast edle Vornehmheit und da dieser Tobende Zwerg, also einen größeren Kontrast kann man sich kaum vorstellen. According to Goebbels, his physique did not match his great mind and ambition for power. He walked with a limp due to the foot injury, and many called him behind his back the poisonous dwarf. But that wasn't the worst nickname attached to his person. According to recent investigations, he was nicknamed the Ram by many actresses and society ladies he seduced, due to his small stature and almost pathological need to mount his conquests. He was also described as manipulative and ruthless, revealed as sexually obsessed and extremely sentimental, even to the point of threatening suicide if girls did not agree to share the bed with him. Now, let's talk a bit about hypocrisy in the National Socialist regime. The Germany of the Third Reich was a German state that between 1933 and 1945 was led by Adolf Hitler and his conservative, racist, and murderous Nazi party. The Fuhrer and his ideas had absolute power over the nation, attempting to control every aspect of German life as much as possible. The Nazis promoted traditional family values intensely, urging German women to be faithful to their husbands above all else. The ideal family was one with many Aryan children, who would be the protectors of the health and longevity of the Reich. All of this was systematically reproduced by the Nazi propaganda machine, led by Goebbels, who was supposed to preach their ideology and traditions by example. According to the Nazis, people should have sexual relations only for reproduction and not for pleasure. However, Nazi leaders often behaved against the values they preached to the masses, particularly the libidinous Nazi propaganda minister. 
Goebbels, undoubtedly a propaganda genius in the service of the Third Reich, was a depraved individual sexually obsessed with constantly seducing women due to his pathological narcissism, the opposite of what he felt internally. For him, it was a significant contradiction to promote an Aryan figure of a strong, tall, and blonde man when physiognomically, he was the opposite. Investigations into his intimate diary drew a possible conclusion. Goebbels felt the need to constantly bed and harass women to avoid feeling less masculine than the National Socialist Superman. As he rose through the ranks of Nazi politics, the pace of his lust increased having several affairs, often with two or three different women at the same time. That was until he met Magda Quant, a divorced woman who had originally married into the founding family of BMW. She would become his soulmate during the Third Reich. They married in 1931, but Goebbels' rise to the Minister of Propaganda of the Reich gave him access to a whole new market of conquests, women from the press and the entertainment business. Fresh meat that the leader could not resist in any way given his condition, as those who were not beautiful movie stars were aspiring to be. And he was the one who decided who participated in the Nazi cultural apparatus. Goebbels' voracious sexual appetite led him to countless adventures with much younger girls, abusing his position to get into bed with them. Among other figures, he courted Manya Behrens, who would become the future lover of Martin Bormann, head of the Nazi chancellery. She supposedly rejected him with a truly hurtful phrase, before doing something like that, I would prefer to scrub the steps. Goebbels also pursued film director Lenny Riefenstahl, an adventure of which a truly embarrassing account is known. On a typical Nazi gala night, Goebbels allegedly put his hand under her dress while sitting next to her at the opera. At a time when Goebbels was already out of control, he met who would be his most problematic affair, Czech actress Lida Barova. The hidden couple had a passionate love and lust story between 1937 and 1938 in absolute secrecy. Eventually, Goebbels told his wife Magda about his Czech lover, as he was thinking of running away with her to Japan and abandoning everything, including his devotion to the party. The affair was so intense and embarrassing that Magda went directly to Adolf Hitler and asked him to intervene. This romance angered Hitler for two fundamental reasons. The first was that if it came to light that Goebbels was living a romance condemned by Nazi ideology, it could be a focus of criticism for the government as hypocritical. Nothing could tarnish the image of the Goebbels' perfect family. Secondly, because Barova was racially inferior as a Slavic woman. For these reasons, the Führer ordered Goebbels to immediately stop having sexual relations with the actress. The propaganda minister had only one weakness, stronger than the constant need to bed women, and that was his loyalty to the Führer. Immediately after the reprimand, Goebbels expelled the actress from Germany and made sure she did not work in the country during the National Socialist regime. The Nazis destroyed Lita's career by constantly intimidating her with the Gestapo, the Nazi secret police, who followed her everywhere. I first met Goebbels at a performance at the UFA. But at first he didn't impress me at all, I hardly noticed him. He invited me to tea with several actresses. It was noticeable that it was always only women. The actresses went in and out of his house, and I kept thinking to myself, this man must have something special beyond his charm. Of course, some actresses also wanted to use his position as Reich's propaganda minister, and thus head of the film industry for their advantages, you know. Goebbels was smart, very smart, and a great man, but I never loved him. Amagda, with whom Goebbels shared a fanatical devotion to Hitler, tolerated his dalliances because she firmly believed he would never leave her. It's worth noting at this point that the relationship between Goebbels, his wife, 
and the Führer, was somewhat peculiar. Magda had been in love with Adolf Hitler from the moment she saw him, and the German dictator always reciprocated her affection, although they never had a sexual relationship, and their connection was purely platonic. There have been speculations that Quant married Goebbels only to be close to Hitler. Whether true or not, the closeness between the woman and the German Chancellor was undeniable. This love triangle was another reason that fueled Goebbels' sense of inferiority, making him even more libidinous with other women. Magda's infatuation with Hitler made the Minister of Propaganda permanently jealous, as he recorded in his diary. She loses herself a bit around the chief. Magda's infidelities had consequences as they pushed her to have her own adventures. She had a brief romantic relationship with Kurt Ludecki, a Nazi thinker, and another with Karl Hanke, a party politician. Despite this effective anomaly in Goebbels' sexual predator condition, the couple had six children and was one of the model families of the Reich. When the war broke out, the pace of Goebbels' sexual life slowed down because the context made his lustful adventures impossible. In the last days of the Reich in April 1945, Magda decided that their six children should be drugged and killed. After poisoning her own children, the couple went to their room where Goebbels shot her and then himself. We're nearing the end of this installment and we wanted to ask you, why do you think Goebbels had such a depraved sexual behavior? Leave your opinions in the comments below. Thank you for watching today's video. We appreciate you sticking around until the end and we look forward to seeing you in the upcoming military history episodes.